My name is Colin Staub, I'm a reporter at East Graph News, and before we get started, I just want to let you know I'm going to be walking around collecting comment, question cards, and then I will bring them up and give them to Dennis, and he will ask questions of our speakers. And now I'd like to introduce Dennis. Dennis Ward is the founder and CEO of the Green Tracking Service, a division of Dennis Ward Enterprises. Its mission is to provide electronics recovery stakeholders visibility into their downstream network and ultimately to provide a universal digital footprint of eScrap flows. With 20 plus years of experience in the datacom and telecom industries, Ward founded DWE to assist industries in significantly maximizing their value, operational efficiencies, and business strategies through digital transformation services. Please welcome Dennis Ward. Thank you. We have an interesting panel today, and uh, the subject, as you notice, is on the state of the uh, program evolution. So we know that uh, we have the two states, and we know that uh, in the United States, we have different types of programs for uh, e-scrap uh, or e-waste flows. But we know with it, whoa, interesting. <laughs> Sound like God. <laughs> okay, so within the US, as we know, uh, the, the states are continuing pushing uh, for better electronic waste programs, as we know today. So uh, through, uh, you know, though new laws have come to, to pass on the books, or not have come to pass on the books in recent years, things have been pretty stable. A number of states have tried of late to adjust existing uh, frameworks to better align uh, with the realities of uh, today's material stream we know, and uh, other factors involved with that. But the question is, how does this affect the stakeholders that are involved in, in this process? How does it affect the OEMs, the manufacturers, right? How does it affect the collectors, the recyclers, the, t the uh, tier one recyclers, and they're downstream? And ultimately, how does it affect the consumer? Well, this is what we're going to discuss today, and we have a panel of the experts here, truly that uh, are in different areas, or uh, different stakeholders themselves, to uh, address this problem. And we see that um, to help us put this nat national landscape you know, into perspective, uh, we have a variety of stakeholders here. So we have Amanda Cotton, who's involved with the, uh, the uh, electronic waste coordinator. Uh, she's an electronic waste coordinator in the Minnesota uh, pollution control agency. So we have a state type of regulator involved, right? And uh, we have Anna Maria Stoughton Cho, who's the manager of electronic waste recycling program uh, in California called Cal Recycle. So we have, we're going to have another state perspective. And uh, we have uh, Jonathan King. He's a VP of legal affairs uh, for TCL in North America. And uh, he's a Manufacturer, right? So we're going to get a manufacturer's perspective, uh, from a legal perspective as well. And uh, we have finally, last but certainly not least, we have Jeff Lloyd, who's the VP of Marketing and Sales at URT Solutions. And he's a recycler. So we have various stakeholders, and they're going to give us their perspective on some of these changing uh, program uh, activities. So first, we are going to. Uh, open the stage to Amanda, and let me just give you a little more information on Amanda. So we see here that Amanda, she, as we mentioned, is uh, an e-waste e coordinator of the Minnesota Pollution uh, Control Agency. But Ms. Cotton has been involved with toxi toxicity uh, reduction, pollution prevention, and production stewardship at the agency for more than 11 years, right? So she's been involved with this e-waste and control and policy for a while. And today, she will discuss recent leg legislative changes to the Minnesota Electronics Recycling Act. So, uh, Amanda, please. Thank you. 